Halloween day, Southern Colorado, uh, 21, 31 October, and it had been a gorgeous day. A lot of blue skies, and then as we have seen across the world over the last uh, decade or so, as the high clouds begin to move into the area, so arrive the calm trails, so arrive the chemtrails. It's these kind of energetic signatures that the planes are interested in. This particular one had one go above it, and then one below it. Notice these signatures are almost always cut in half. There's two parts to them, much like this one has something extending off here, off here, and then a squirt out the middle that this other trail had, had marked off. Now on the horizon, same thing. We've got some marking trails. This one, very persistent, but with a strong push to the lower left or towards the north or the lower right, excuse me. But it, why would that not fade? Why would that not sublimate? And curiously enough, push there, and then there's a gap. There's a gap in this other trail here. So it's like there's some correspondence between those two phenomena. Sweep over a little more, have another persistent mark of a, 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 of a chemtrail. And then, you can see kind of the, the cirrus pattern that's in place. We've had an investigative flight there as well. All right, a bit of time has passed. This spot you can see has, has spread a little bit more. <clears throat> Excuse me. With this indent coming towards the west and this one off to the east. And we still have our, our trail, which for some reason actually looks like it goes through an uplift and then back down. Like there's some ascent, some process that's happening in this dark spot. If uh, a cloud is actually ascending or lifting, that would imply a cooling atmosphere. It is that lift that creates clouds, thunderstorms, all thermodynamically driven rain events require this lift. And it's counterintuitive to see the darker space here where the lift is occurring. That would be, one would expect, where the cloud is. But then again, we also wouldn't expect to see these small-scale uh, anomalies, or these small-scale clouds, split precisely by a trail. Here's another lift here. And you can see the little larger cloud structure. And then, interestingly enough, we've got another plane coming along. Uh, and he's going to hit this probably spot right in the middle, this darkening spot here. That certainly seems uh, to be what it's aiming for. Push on in. Of at least a 757, that may be a 767. See if I can get it steadied out. And on the bigger screen, I'm probably going to be able to pick out the paint scheme, but this one just isn't quite readily apparent to me. All right, there we're going through the cloud. Let's back out to get the context. And he is essentially interested in this push right through there, as that's where he popped out of. Look at that. And it's a different kind of trail. It's one of the shorter trails, not, not this composition, but one of the shorter ones. And then I can hear him, and he is in descent. He's not climbing, he's not in steady flight, he's in descent. As he hits just this far southern extent of this, of this cloud. Let me see if we can't get another look at his, his paint. Looks like it's light blue or gray. It's definitely like a 767 in nature. And so, we had trail, trail, and then he's come along, and now he's just, just kissed this lower extent of this previous trail. This is also something that I would expect that they would be investigating. But the question comes back again. Why are these clouds so discombobulated? Why do they not fly with the wind? Why in time-lapse imagery do we see these curling like little eddies? I can almost begin to see a cube shape here. Almost begin to see a cube, and he's going to cross just on the far northern extent of that cloud that comprises the northwestern corner of this cloud cube, which is the inverse of this location here. This side would correspond with this, and this one with this. So the more we observe, honestly, 
the more questions we get. But there's some force, some energy, responsible for this shape of clouds. And this is why I keep going back time and time and time again. Not to harp, not to thermodynamics, not even to electromagnetic, although that's probably a transitory force, but to the organ energy, to this dark matter force that permeates all space. Although it moves through all matter, it moves through matter at different rates of speed depending on its density and its composition. It goes through wood at a different speed than it would through water or through metals. And so I'm, I'm speculating here, and I kind of talked about this in yesterday's video, that these clouds, these contrails, are leaving or seeding the sky with some material that allows the energy from the etheric, from the zero point, to manifest electromagnetically, and then eventually into the thermodynamic realm, which is the one that is understood by all of mainstream weather. Nothing else that I'm aware of accounts for these shapes. Trail off in the distance here. Doesn't look like it's necessarily a marky one, and indeed it looks like it's kind of a smallish plane since it's a, it's a wee bit of a trail. It is certainly blue in composition and is uh, eastbound. It kind of has another one over here. So we got the one here and then another one here. And then there's even another one popping up here that might be interested in this cloud shape, which again has the two for format, two for or it's a, become a bi-cloud with a, an indent on one side symmetrically to this indent on the other side. So we'll see if that trail is interested in it in just a sec. And he went through the bottom part of it. Turned our head, looked away for just a bit too long to see it actually happen. And he went right through the bottom. Where you can see this part of the ice crystals, the particles, weeping out. He just hit the bottom of that extent. So these little trails are indeed displaying intent with relationship to their paths. More trails, more intent, more curiosity of these funny shaped cirrus-like, or if you want to go esoteric, these sylph-like clouds. This is that big jet we observed cruising along to Star North. And we have our plane here. Nice trail. Little cloud it went through, and then there's still a faint remnant of a trail here. But if it is condensation, then why doesn't the trail actually last longer or grow inside the cloud? Problem is, these are not condensation trails, so that doesn't happen. Even then, I'm gonna push back in. This plane it's going to go right to the gap between this cloud and this cloud here. Let's see if we can find folk a little better focus. There we go. With this trail we've been watching earlier, hearing a jet fly, interested in this wide spot here in this other trail. A little southwest flight. And you see him? Went right across his widest extent. So even though he's not leaving a trail, there is something that the trails revealed that this plane was interested in. I lost focus again, didn't I? Let's come back out. So even the planes without trails are curious about the geometry revealed by the chemtrails. The short trail off to the north, went through the top side of this. Short-ish trail. Sometimes they look short and then all of a sudden the trail goes like full wingspan and then it just is one of those permanent sticky trails. It's a curious plane. Doesn't quite look like a 737, but it must be. You now they almost all have the winglets on the tips of the wing, almost without fail. 
but it went to the dark spot here. This cloud has a scoop here, and he kissed the southern extent of this scoop. And even then, the trail is now sticking and glowing more brightly once it leaves this darkening. Now the shortest trail here, he's just crossed right through the middle. I need to block the sun out of my eyes. This little, little circular thing went right diagonally across it. Who knows what that'll morph into in time. Much like these other clouds are kind of revealing some interesting shapes once the trails have had some time to uh, get attached to them and the cloud has been allowed to, uh, to develop. You can see we still have the square in here. Still have this trail went right through and it's still stuck in that opening but the direction changes then it comes out this way. So they're micromanaging the atmosphere incredibly, incredibly accurately. Now this trail back to the north, which seemed uh, so faint, has now begun to stick. But what's curious, as it crossed through right in here, is that looks like we have the outline of a lot, rather large radial, or large round structure. With juts, or curls, coming out of it. You can see all the little things and then even inside the seam or this edge of the cloud we have this texture this cloud this trail obviously marked the outer edge of some of it and now the trail there it is really beginning to stick here's another plane I heard him you didn't catch him until I heard him but it's uh the southwest. He is a level flight. If he was commercial, he should be climbing to cruise altitude. But he's not. If he was on approach to Albuquerque, he should be on descent. But he's not. He's in level flight. Certainly under 300 knots, so he's not in any particular hurry to get anywhere. And when is an airline not in a hurry to get his passengers on the ground at destination? So he's just low and slow and he's headed somewhere. He's shuttling off to work. Shuttling off to work. I see that often, often, with these southwest flights. And then our trails continue to show the, the depth. And this may be an over, down, and then continue. So we might have some vertical boundary that this cloud is, uh, that these trails are revealing for us here. Because that's certainly what it's appearing to be. But some of them, I mean, you, you, I had the sense from what you said about the your Great Lakes flight where you were talking about oh, it yeah. and the pilot kind turned kind of white that yeah. some of them are. I think, I think because they've got such front row seats to all of this, uh -huh. they have to be aware of what's going on. Whether their planes are participating in it at the time they, they're, they're flying, I don't know whether they know. Yeah. This one's a FedEx plane, the one we're looking at here. Oh, interesting. This one that, uh, and I may not be able to get them, the one that they did the 90 degrees and did a little tail clip, as I like to call it. Let me zoom in and see if I can't spot this guy. Wow. Not really. He's just too far away and I can't get it steady enough. But this was a perfect 90 degree angle. I mean, exquisitely so. And there's something, and I yeah. talk, there's something yeah. in this cloud that this FedEx flight is interested in. When I was, uh, when I was in an esoteric seminary, I heard a theory that the Earth is already, that it, they're already, um, they didn't actually tie in weather control per se, mm -hmm. but that the, like the physical body of the Earth was being reinforced you know, kind of like the Matrix. Uh huh. Uh huh. By this, the but, chemtrails. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, now this this trail is fading 
much faster than they often do. Is that atmospheric? Different mixtures. Or different mixtures. It's like having a toolkit. Yeah. You're not going to use a screwdriver for everything. You need hammers, you, you need don't. chisels, you need screws, yeah. you need no you need pliers. I well, I know. And That's so good. multiple mixtures, multiple altitudes, yeah. and, and, and different summer observation. And some are probably for trying to get a hold a grip on what the atmosphere is doing. Yeah. And but he this was this was he's still casting a shadow, so he was actually above these other clouds. I'm seeing a bit of a shadow there. He was above that cloud. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh. Yep, just just barely so, just barely so. Uh, but, it's only because I'm seeing the trail looks like between here and the clouds. Yeah. Yep. But it, it, wow. That's yep. Amazing. And then we've got another fatty coming up from the southeast here. And if I push in, I'll probably be able to see some geometry inside the tail, his tail. I'm not going to be able to see it on the small screen, but when I get home and, and throw it into under the computer, I'll be able to see a little more. But um, yeah, there's something something he's interested in here, so he'll join. It does, doesn't it? And this parcel of air is again is is moving southeast, and so all of that is included in the calculations. And I'm I. So if these are not commercial airliners. So they're flying just for this purpose. Exactly. That, ena that enables them to target these atmospheric yeah. anomalies. Yeah. How? <laughs> I know. So how, how, do, how, do, how does that influence? I mean, do, does uh, air traffic control know that? Have to. Guys? They have to. The thing with air traffic control, though, is that when a radar sweeps past the plane, yeah. they've got transponders on board. Yeah. The transponders squawk. And says I'm UAL flight nine uh, five nine seven. Yeah. Da, 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 at altitude, is it sends back the information from from the plane? Mm -hmm. If these planes aren't squawking back, are they really there? I I got you. Are they really there? I got you. Well, that seems a little dangerous. Doesn't it though? <laughs> and I think remember when we had Reagan f fire yeah. the Patco yeah. air traffic controllers. Yeah, this is. Right. Yeah, same spot, isn't it? Yep. Same spot. Yep. yep, same spot. And we'll see. I'll be curious to see if this trail ends up being... This trail is... Uh... Not as sticky. Let me see if I can get a make. He's... He's, he's definitely... It looks like he went right in the middle. Yeah, it's a little hazy for me to figure out who's, whose paint he's flying. But huh. just a touch below. But he threaded the he threaded the loop, mm -hmm. threaded the the kind of loop that's up and over that trail. He went right right through it. Yep. Oh. So, and here's another one coming up from this direction. It Whoa, just, uh, my gosh! Yeah. Well, there's two actually. And then there's one behind us over the tops of the trees. Over the tops of the trees behind us. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. Yep, and then we can go to the horizon and see four. Let's see. One, yeah, two, three, well, and four. One of the ones on the horizon, the guy that. I think so. Yeah. Yep. Um, oh, one coming. So a couple headed. There's this little incredible. dark spot he went through right there. What do you think, Luke? Are you but why? I mean, weather-wise, this would be a, a wholly uninteresting day to me, as a weatherman, talking to my audience. Yeah, you know, gotcha. this, this is, this is nothing. Beautiful. Yes. But, but is there anything, <laughs> is there anything natural in the sky? Uh, that's a really good question. And my quick answer is no. Yeah, well. We're beyond <laughs> that. No. Just so you know. And so this guy well, that we're, we're seeing here. I wouldn't have asked <laughs> Watch how this one is going to hit the end of this previous trail here. Yep. It'll go right and clip the very end of it. Right on target. Mm hmm So, the fact that this previous trail still stayed visible is important to this next flight. The why is the question. Why? 
Why is that important? This is a lot of money we're talking about here. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> true right too. Here in this five minutes. That's a yeah. Delta flight. All the fuel and the planes. And, and fuel is a consumable, so it can't be replaced. Money can money can be replaced. Money can be replaced. As long as we can hit print. Yeah. Yeah. It'll happen. <laughs> It'll happen. Two planes coming here. This was a Southwest flight that came overhead. What I'm curious about is this one. When it crosses the Southwest flight, what will be the visibility of this Southwest trail when that happens? Because I've talked about these tail clips. When this plane will cross this one right at the point that it trail its trail leaves visibility. And it almost looks like that's going to happen. And even up into here, there's just a, a little bit of a swollen spot. Where is it? Kind of right above that, where there's a little bit of a push. Now, I think we're kind of off. I would have almost yeah. expected it to be about right here when it crossed. It's close, but not quite. But there's just more planes. Yeah. Another marking one off and through here. Well, do you Fat think one above the horizon. Do you think it's uh, etheric holes in the, in the... It could be etheric holes. Yeah. <laughs> it could be weak spots or spots where energy is coming through. Right. Now, and that's... Or that leaking would, out. <clears throat> well, yeah, yeah. Either right. way, either it's way. coming into this reality, yeah. into this dimension. Interesting. And I, I think that's a very real possibility. Um, yeah. 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 All right, let's wind this little outdoor adventure down. Here's a cloud that had all the trails through, the one that the FedEx flight went through. Still have our geometry, still have our interesting holes here, and then even probably a third here as well. And it continues off to, believe it or not, the southeast. Clouds are coming in from the northeast on this day. Next cloud, boom, there's our, got a ribble with uh, the uplift coming off the edge of this, this boundary. And then the other debris inside the clouds. Anomaly, anomaly trail. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Share this far and wide and keep looking up. Off in the distance, this is that cloud we've uh, kind of been looking at for the last few minutes. It had my attention. Glasses on so I can see where it is. Oh, it's right there. This trail. Went right through this fold. In this trail here, through that wide spot. So just another uh, another example of a intent of one trail piercing an, an anomaly made visible by a previous trail. I've just been outside before I scooted on in. And this plane had gone overhead. Have not seen a lot of waves today. Not a lot of this kind of action, this kind of action. This particular plane, we got a, a remnant of a trail here in the middle with rippling or, it's not even so decidedly rippling, it's just kind of some convoluted mess. That or this geometry here is different than this geometry here. This plane nevertheless is going through the middle of it. We can already see in the middle that this trail is uh, a little brighter here hasn't separated and will probably persist. Something about flying this plane, this flight, right through that spot was important to them. And why? Like I said earlier, this is a this is a nothing day for a weatherman. There's nothing of any significance other than it's a gorgeous Halloween day in Colorado. Nothing out of the nothing extraordinary. So why all the planes? Why all the investigations in the sky? Must be something that's going to happen down the road. So this plane, there's going to be some interaction between these two that in about 60 seconds will be made clear. And now we have that push as it begins to fade. This is certainly a white trail and this one looks more like one of the uh, the oranger ones. Good old airplanes. Who would have thought? But you can definitely see different coloration between the two trails here. With the pinkish mixture 
and then the whiter mixture. What's happening here? So the trail looks like the plane went through and threaded this little rise here, this little top, as the plane uh, kind of cut it. It's like uh, threading this fabric here covered the top of this of this thread which happened to be the trail back to this cloud of the south the plane here going right through what i would consider the heart or the center of this formation right through it right through it and precisely so more measuring, more denoting the exact GPS location, elevation, Latin lawn, and so forth. This is not a typical cirrus cloud. Not even close. See this plane here. Right across this formation. Right across the middle of that guy. Right. Right in between those two. Those two holes. Boom, boom. Right across that. Down across that seam here, and then continuing on. Looks like he's got a more geometry showing up that he's gonna have to cross it probably through the middle of the sky right there. Everything's in alignment. All these straight line phenomena. Boom, right through that pinch here, right across this, across that, through the opening, and then into the next formation. Right into that. So there's just this incredible exquisiteness to their flights. I know everybody's always asking me, what kind of camera do you use? What do you use? It's this amazing 18 megapixel, although I only shoot at 10. I don't need all that. It's a Sony DSC HX 200V. 30 power oct optical. And then with this zooming algorithm, you can push it into 90 power. So that enables me to uh, see the paint on the planes, to see whose planes they are. It's kind of important to me. Corner of a square here, here, up, and over. And that's gonna be sunset, guys. That's gonna be sunset for Halloween. Happy Halloween, what a ghoulish storm Sandy was. 50 billion dollars or so and I'm sure it's just the first of more to come.